Good morning, baseball. It is your boy, NMR Sports here, coming back at you with another episode of Good Morning Baseball, where we talk about everything that happened yesterday in Major League Baseball, all the top stories, all the home runs, everything that went down. Yesterday was crazy. We had a pitcher hitting a grand slam. Ronald Acuna Jr. took the Major League lead in home runs. Byron Buxton is still playing like an MVP candidate. Ian Kennedy might be the best closer in baseball. There are so many things to talk about today. Now, before we do get into the video, be sure to smash that like button for me or comment something about your team. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm if you want to see more people, more baseball fans reaching this channel. Our goal is 1,000 subscribers by the end of the baseball season. So you guys can help me reach that goal by hitting that sub button. I also have a Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff down there in the description below. If you want to talk more baseball, I also have a Discord where we talk all about baseball pretty much every single day. So uh, with that out of the way, let's get right into the video and start talking about some baseball. Now the Giants and the Rockies had a doubleheader yesterday. The first game of the doubleheader, the Giants put up 10 runs in the first inning so that was an absolute blowout the second game of the double header the Rockies and the Giants were facing off the Rockies were down six to two in the seventh inning which in a double header is the last inning basically the ninth inning there the Rockies went on to put up six runs in the seventh inning in order to beat the Giants in game two of that double header so a huge comeback from the Colorado Rockies there and they ended it on a Charlie Blackman walk-off home run so they do split the double header there the Giants take game one with those 10 first inning runs and then the uh, Rockies Rockies have that huge comeback in the seventh inning in order to even up the score there. Now, CJ Crone also homered in this one. Brandon Belt homered in both games of the doubleheader. And Wilmer Flores homered in this one as well. They were over there in Colorado, so the ball was definitely flying at that high altitude yesterday. Now, Giants-Rockies was not the only doubleheader yesterday. The Cubs and the Dodgers were also facing off there. The first game, Clayton Kershaw was on the mound, and honestly, it was another blowout there. The Cubs went on to win that one 7-1, to one, but game two of the doubleheader, it's almost like the same thing that the Rockies Rockies and the Giants had except for this one ended up going extra innings the Dodgers put up two runs in the eighth inning which was the first extra inning there then the Cubs actually matched them putting up two in their half of the eighth they shut them down in the ninth inning and then the Cubs walked it off on a David Boat single David Boat uh, Cubs legend I feel like he just always comes up in the right moment and has a clutch hit other than that he kind of sucks but I don't know. David Boat, one of the clutchest players in all of baseball. The Dodgers would go on to lose both games of this doubleheader against the Chicago Cubs. And the Dodgers, after a really hot start, are kind of coming back down to earth. They are 17 and 14 on the year. Not the best record in baseball. Still well above 500, but it is a, they're inching closer to below 500 right now. And the Cubs are one game below 500 still. But fighting in that NL Central, if it wasn't for the Brewers being so cracked right now, uh, it would be a much, much closer race. Now, Javi Baez homered in this one. Also, Jason Hayward for the Chicago Cubs. So a few home runs in this one. Wrigley Field, or Wrigley Field a very hitter-friendly ballpark, of course. But the Cubs would go on to win that second game of the doubleheader in extra innings. Now the New York Yankees were facing off against the Houston Astros for the first time in person uh since learning of the news of the yankee of the astros cheating scandal obviously that kind of came out in 2019 before there was a chance to uh see them in person in 2020 obviously the fans were absolutely ruthless apparently hundreds of fans were getting kicked out of this one i saw some twitter posts that people were getting kicked out just for yelling at them I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comment section which side of the aisle you're on. If you are against the Astros still, you would be one of the people in the stands booing and cheering. Uh, or if you're kind of over it, you don't really care about what the Astros are doing anymore. Now, the Yankees would go on to win this one. It was pretty close for a little bit. Stanton hit a home run in the first inning. Alex Bregman hit one as well. It was a 3-3 three three ball game going into the sixth inning. Then the Yankees scored four unanswered runs to win by a score of 7-3. to three. Like I said, Giancarlo Stanton hit a moonshot home run in this one like he always does speaking of moon shots michael brantley absolutely sent one to the moon last night i believe it hit off the facing of the third deck it was one of the most impressive home runs i've seen almost like barry bonds tier just not quite as far so the yankees go on to beat the astros and some justice has been served aaron judge losing the mvp to jose altuve in 2017 and also losing to them in the alcs in 2017 so the yankees fans do not like the astros to say the least so it was kind of some good justice over there the yankees being able to win the first game of the season Series. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Now, Chicago White Sox starting pitcher Dylan Cease had an absolutely phenomenal outing yesterday. This guy's been kind of the back of the rotation piece for the White Sox for a little bit. Still really young, got a lot of life on that fastball, and uh, he's actually been having a very good year this year. Yesterday, he had six innings pitch. He only allowed one hit three walks and 11 strikeouts so Dylan Cease was on fire yesterday 
uh, racking up the strikeouts over there. I believe that's his career high in strikeouts. So Dylan C is definitely a pitcher to watch. Honestly, that entire rotation for the White Sox has been phenomenal. Obviously, we knew Lance Lynn was going to be a stud. We knew Giolito was going to be a stud. Honestly, Giolito's probably been the worst pitcher in the rotation because Rondon's been so Rodon Rodon has been so good for them this year. Dylan Cease is pitching well now. Lance Lynn's pitching well. I believe Keiko's pitching well as well. So honestly. Giolito, fifth starter at the moment. <laughs> That's how he's pitching, at least. So Dylan Cease, great game. Jose Abreu homered in this one as well to beat the Reds 9 to nothing. Uh, the White Sox offense going off over there. And Jose Abreu finally inching closer to that MVP form. Not quite there yet, but he did hit his sixth home run of the year. So at least the power numbers are there. You just got to get that average and everything else up at the moment. Now, Cole Irvin had a solid outing for the Oakland A's yesterday. They were facing off against the Toronto Blue Jays. And my man went out and had an eight inning pitched outing with three hits allowed one earned run one walk and nine strikeouts Cole Irvin has been a pretty mediocre pitcher his entire career ERA hovering a little bit above three but yeah he had a great outing last night against the Blue Jays I know some of them are hurt right now but still a good offense over there in Toronto great outing for my man Cole Irvin glad to see a young prospect doing well I believe it's his third MLB season so hopefully he can keep that up for the Oakland A's and they'll have a really good rotation back there now over in Minnesota the Texas Rangers were taking off in the Minnesota Minnesota Twins and Byron Buxton is continuing his case for being the MVP this season, hitting his ninth home run of the season. Obviously, he has a great average, great on base percentage, and he's hitting for power this year. I don't know, Mike Trout. You better watch out. I know Mike Trout still has the edge on the MVP race right now, but it is getting closer and closer every single day. Byron Buxton absolutely going off right now. Unfortunately, it was not enough to beat the Texas Rangers. Now, this one actually ended up going into extra innings after the Rangers tied the game in the ninth inning off of Taylor Rogers. In the 10th inning, the Rangers would also go on to score three more runs while not allowing a single run against the Twins right there. So the Rangers would go on to win by a score of six to three in extra innings off home runs from Willie Calhoun and Adolis Garcia, who is an absolute stud. If you guys don't know that name, you should by now. And Ian Kennedy gets his eight Eighth save of the season. My man Ian Kennedy has a 2.08 ERA, an ERA plus of 210. My man has zero walks on the season after facing 48 batters so far this year and 17 strikeouts. So his K per nine is above 11 and his uh, walks per nine is zero at the moment. So Ian Kennedy having an amazing season. He might be the best reliever in baseball right now. I know that's a little far-fetched, but best closer in baseball I should say yeah so the Rangers will go on to get the victory in this one and now let's get into the top game of the night you know I had to wait till the end for this one the Braves facing off against the Washington Nationals Wasker you know uh Wasker you know I think I got it right this time what the hell man last start we talked about him I, you guys remember last uh good morning baseball he started he had an amazing start and he hit a home run in that game and he was just an absolute stud well in this game he had an amazing start and he hit a grand slam. My man hit a moonshot grand slam off of Tanner Rainey into dead center. This was not just some cheap shot down the line that barely squeaked over. This was an actual dinger, straight up dead center. And it was an outside pitch too. It wasn't even to his pole side. I don't know, man. That was an impressive home run. Uh, I don't know what you guys think, but that thing went... <laughs> that, was a, that was a damn good hit. I don't know. Maybe we have another two-way player over there in Wasker Enoa. Maybe we'll start using him as a pinch hit bat at the moment. Ended up going seven innings pitch, four hits allowed, zero earned runs, two walks, and four strikeouts and that grand slam. So we had as many RBIs as strikeouts in this one. That's absolutely hilarious. Uh, yeah, Wasker, you know what, man? Might be the best pitcher in that rotation right now. Charlie Morton's been struggling a little bit lately. Uh, Max Freed is on the IL, to my knowledge, still. Ian Kennedy's been pretty good lately, but Wasker Enoa, a guy who we maybe thought wasn't even going to be in the rotation to start the season, is now probably the ace of the Atlanta Braves and their number four hitter, I, sh I should be honest. Maybe we'll start batting him in, like, the seven hole because that Braves offense without Wasker Enoa in there has been very, very quiet. I'm pretty sure he has more home runs than some of the starters on the Braves. Now, Ronald Acuna Jr. claimed the home run crown in this one as well. He had his 10th of the season, and my God, I think he has NL MVP on lock right now. It's not really a conversation. I know Juan Soto's doing well over there, but he's been hurt a little bit. Ronald Acuna Jr. is just doing it all this year. There's not really anybody holding a candle to him this year, and it really sucks that the team around him hasn't been playing well because he has been the best player in the National League, like I said. So that is going to do it for us today in Good Morning Baseball. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're done watching in the video and leave a like if you enjoyed this one appreciate all the support we've had lately guys i'll see you all in the next one you have a great rest of your day